In the past year, companies making climate-related marketing claims are now facing more financial and reputational pressures. This has even resulted in investigations for greenwashing and misuse of ESG funds. Lots of companies want to tell us that they're going green, but how many of them are covering up the truth? While companies love to make big, broad claims about the benefits of their offsets, they really don't like getting into the details. A legislative push is already occurring, both abroad and here in the US with a ruling proposed by the SEC. Publicly traded companies would be required to disclose their carbon emissions with the same level of accuracy and detail as they do in their 10 ks The timeline for this is moving fast and will leave some companies scrambling to possibly report on their 2023 fiscal year under this very compressed time frame. The reality is that climate reporting is quickly evolving from a nice to have to a need to have tool. Currently, 42% of companies above 10 billion in market cap are self-reporting some climate-relevant information. But soon, all registrants might be required to include certain climate-related disclosures, according to a proposal from the SEC in March of this year. ESG and carbon data will essentially go from being voluntarily disclosed using you know, a variety of arbitrary methodologies that can vary in terms of scope, transparency, and rigor, to data that will be required to be consistently reported and audited annually. All this makes carbon accounting more important than ever. So what is carbon accounting exactly? Just like with a company's financial statements, understanding your carbon emissions as a business is fundamental to building strong environmental stewardship. When we talk about carbon accounting, you'll often hear about different scopes. Scope 1 refers to the GHG emissions produced directly from your own operations. For example, burning fuel in a fleet of your company vehicles. Scope 2 are indirect GHG emissions generated by purchased electricity, steam, heating, cooling. Scope 3 are basically the emissions of all your suppliers. So for Scope 1 and 2 emissions, data largely exists within the company systems. Gathering, auditing, and customizing this data can span a variety of different internal systems and stakeholders and can have major time delays when you're depending on third parties like utility bills, for instance. But software, automation, and APIs can help address many of these pain points. Scope three is where it starts to get really tricky. Companies can have hundreds, if not thousands of suppliers, which adds to the challenge of accurately reporting and understanding what the carbon footprint of the materials you're consuming as a business is. Many have looked at spend-based accounting as a potential solution. The spend-based method looks into the dollars spent across various materials and suppliers and then applies a carbon emission factor. While this is a valid approach to you know, roughly understand where you're at as a business, it will be harder to figure out how to drive decisions to lower your carbon footprint, whether it means switching suppliers or gauging the impact of using a different material altogether. It goes without saying that we are currently in an inflationary environment, so even if you cut your consumption of certain products, a spend-based approach might not show you reducing your carbon footprint if that same product is more expensive the following year. Accurate financial data guides companies in making informed business decisions. The same thing is true for carbon accounting. We're moving towards a future where we don't just account and report carbon emissions, but use the data to plan and drive carbon reduction initiatives. The need for accurate carbon accounting has created a rapidly growing opportunity for software startups, building software-enabled solutions that are self-serve, scalable, automated and trustworthy in providing their customers in accurate and real-time data to track their progress towards net zero goals. There is currently no existing scaled climate-specific software, and we are at the starting line of a race to service what we think is really the biggest shift in the compliance market that we've seen since Sarbanes-Oxley was passed in the early 2000s. Some of the earliest and most well-funded startups are looking to serve the mass market with a generalist approach. They're going after the entire market opportunity and are offering consulting-heavy onboarding and processes 
with a product that really covers around 80% of the customization and automation needed. So this really leaves room for competition from more specialized, industry-specific players serving what other generous platforms would consider very specific, complex use cases. These companies are scaling enterprise software to enable deep decarbonization strategies in the most emission-intensive industries, like real estate, for example, and other complex supply chains, really the areas where it matters the most. All in all, no matter if the company is a generalist or industry-specific platform, or serving small enterprises or larger enterprises, the emerging landscape is still maturing, despite the amount of capital raised and the time advantage of some other platforms.